Welcome back to Inorganic Chemistry. In this section of the main group chemistry chapter, part H, we will study the halogens. So far, we've gone through all these groups in the main group chemistry, and so we're now we're ready for group 7A called the halogens, and halogen means salt producers. When you react these with the metals, they make salts, and actually they were isolated from the salts. Chlorine was first isolated by reduction of aqueous salt solution, and chlorine was named because of the resulting pale green gas. Chlorine chloros is Greek for pale green. The other elements were similarly isolated. The hardest, though, to isolate was fluorine, and Moisson finally isolated it. Before that, a number of chemists died trying to isolate it because both fluorine, F2, and hydrofluoric acid, HF, the precursor, are very reactive and toxic. Moisson, who was successful and survived the experiment, resulted in getting the Nobel Prize in 1906. The other contender that year in chemistry was Mendeleev. So that gives you an idea of how important isolating fluorine was. Fluorine is the most reactive element in the periodic table. It reacts with everything except helium, neon, and argon. So that's the combination of a weak fluorine-fluorine bond. So again, this is an example of the uniqueness principle. One reason fluorine-fluorine bonds are considered to be weak is because they're so short that the lone pair on one fluorine atom repels the lone pair on another fluorine atom. On the other hand, any other element reacting with fluorine makes a strong covalent bond. For example, the HF bond dissociation energy is 568 kilojoules per mole. And this is probably because of fluoride is going to be very charge dense. It's small ion and will polarize that bond so that polar covalent bond is stronger than just a unpolarized bond. So commercially or industrially, how are the halogens made? And this is the chloroalkali process is one of the largest volume reactions done in the world. Sodium chloride, aqueous sodium chloride, is electrolyzed. So the addition of electrical energy, electrons directly into the reaction mixture to produce sodium hydroxide, which is a commercially important chemical, and chlorine gas which is also a commercially important chemical, as we'll see later on in this lecture. We'll look at bleach, as everyone knows, is important for cleaning and sterilizing. So where do the halogen reactivity is characterized by oxidation reduction chemistry? The elements exist as dimolecular compounds, either in the gas, liquid, or solid state. Add two electrons to make the ions. This is highly favorable. They're, they're all easily reduced, so that means they're strong oxidizers. And fluorine in particular is very easily reduced, more than twice the energy of the next member in the group, chlorine. So again, uniqueness principle here. And we also see the periodic trend. Nonmetals tend to be oxidizers, but then the oxidation strength decreases as you go down the group because electron affinity is decreasing. And also the hydration enthalpy is decreasing. So actually this is why fluorine has such a large reduction energy is because of two factors, the weak, weak fluorine bond that we already talked about, but then also the large hydration enthalpy. So the resulting ion, fluoride ion, is very small, charged, highly charged dense, and attracts those water molecules to itself, releasing a lot of energy. Oxidizing agents is how the halogens are used in chemistry. Other places where the halogens are used, the hydrides are acidic. HF is a weak acid. The others are strong acids. HF is weak. That just means it doesn't dissociate completely in water. It doesn't mean that it's not very reactive, and actually it will etch glass. So for example, if we take HF in water and react it with silica, which is the main component of glass, it makes hydrofluorosilic acid and water. And this is how you make frosted glass. Fluoridation is another uh, application of the hal halogens, in particular fluorine. All municipal water in the United States has fluoride added to it. Fluoride is also the active ingredient in toothpaste. This promotes dental health because the hydroxyapatite which is the mineral that is actually a biomineral that composes your tooth enamel, is replaced by calcium fluoroapatite. 
And this mineral is stronger than the natural hydroxyapatite, so it gets stronger teeth and less cavities. Another important application for public health, as, as well as the other applications, is bleaching. And bleach is produced by the reaction of dichlorine oxide gas with water to make bleach, or actually hypochloric acid. Another interesting topic is the oxy acids that we talked about in our acid-base chemistry chapter. So this is uh, an example here. The halogen oxides are acidic, particularly this is hypochloric acid, and this is reacted with sodium hydroxide to make sodium hypochlorite which is commercial bleach. It's about 5.25% sodium hypochlorite in aqueous solution. The bleaching effect is, this is, as you'd expect, a strong oxidizer, just as we saw for the other halogen compounds. So this will oxidize the conjugated bonds in chromophores, or dyes, and so you can bleach clothes. So also oxidize the membranes in microbes, killing them, and so it also has a sterilizing effect. So those are the halogens and their applications. Yeah.